Well, joining us now is Martin Shreerab. He is the director of the Migrant Offshore Aid Station, MOAS, the group that who carried out the rescue in Lisa's report. He's also the former commander of the armed forces in Malta. He joins us now uh, from there by Skype. Thank you very much indeed for being with us, uh, uh, Mr. Shreerab. Uh, very alarming pictures there from Lisa Holland, uh, underlining that there appears to be no let up in the winter of people trying to cross the sea uh, to get away from uh, the Syrian war zone. Alarming indeed, and we're happy to, to have assisted those people in distress. And above all, um, I want to thank those who has, have made it possible for us to be there. And, and I hope that we continue to be there assisting those in distress in the Aegean. Could you tell us a little about uh, your operation, MOAS? Because, of course, uh, Samos is a long way from uh, Greece, uh, where you are, uh, from Malta, where you are. Yes, I was actually on the boat up to about three, four days ago. Um, uh, um, we started operating in, in, in the eastern uh, um, Aegean on the, towards the end of uh, um, December. We, we focused, uh, we shifted our focus from the central Mediterranean to the Aegean because despite the fact that it's, it's winter, despite the weather conditions, despite the treacherous seas, people keep taking to the water, keep crossing, and people keep dying. Um, we're there with a 51-meter boat, the, the responder, with two fast rescue launches, and with a team which includes rescue swimmer, um, hoping to, to mitigate uh, um, loss of life at sea. But presumably you're only encountering a, a small proportion of those people trying to cross the sea. Yes, of course. Um, thousands are crossing the, the, the uh, um, uh, crossing from Turkey to Greece. The, the, the Greek Turkish coastline is massive. Thousands of, of islands, some inhabited and some uninhabited. We have been this, the, 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 given a, a particular operational area by the Greek Ghost Guard, and we operate in the area of Pharmaconisi and Agathonisi. We've been there um, for just two weeks, and we've already been instrumental in, in five or six rescues. What, what, what is the extent of the official cooperation from uh, the countries uh, and indeed, of course, the European Union as a whole, which has said uh, it's going to take charge of this situation? Well, we coordinate very closely with the Hellenic Coast Guard. Um, uh, there is a system where you have the, the rescue coordination center in Piraeus, and then there are smaller rescue coordination centers in, in some of the main islands. We coordinate with the rescue coordination center in Samos. Um, uh, increasingly, there's the realization that the responder is an asset that can save lives in the Aegean, and, and we are being called to assist um, often. You're a charity, so are you getting official help for your operation? We're getting help from the people who, like us, uh, um, feel that people do not deserve to die out at sea. So we, we, we are there. Uh, um, it's the general public that supports us, and I encourage the public to keep supporting us to ensure that we continue to be um, out at sea for the months to come. What happens to the people you rescue? Do they uh, get access to uh, the rest of, of Europe uh, once you bring them ashore? We really don't know. I mean, our role ends uh, and uh, the minute we hand them over to the authorities uh, and to the other NGOs who support them on land. Our work is out at sea and we spend as little time as possible um, um, at the quay, um, close to the shore. We want to be out at sea. Our role is to save lives at sea. This is massively distressing, of course, that the loss of human life. Uh, it's not your responsibility, but how do you think this problem can be ended? Well, we think it's a collective responsibility. So we think, yes, that's everyone's responsibility to do something about it. Now, whether you can, like us, go out to sea with a 52-meter boat or you can um, try and change this course or try and influence other people into seeing this from a particular perspective or donating to a charity that can help or reporting about the crisis in a particular way, I think it's a collective responsibility. Um, obviously, the state 
states need to find a solution here. But um, I underline, we feel that it's a collective responsibility. This is a global situation that requires global solutions. Mr. Sridhar, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having us.